And you've just heard Raindrops, which is a track on Promise, the new album from Pop Up. And I'm delighted to be joined now by Demo from the band. Hello, Demo. Hi, Alec. Nice to see you. Uh, good to see you too. So what can you tell us about Promise? Uh, well, um, it's kind of taken about, probably meaningfully, it's taken about six years or something like that. Um, sort of off and on. It's not like we were... Uh, in there slogging it out the whole time. Uh, we we kind of stopped playing back around or about 2010, 2011, something like that. Um, and then at some point around about 2016, 2017, uh, Nick and Michael kind of independently started mucking about with um, sort of like electronic look-based things. And then maybe around about 2017, um, uh, kind of got into a habit of two or three of us um, being in the same flat at the same time uh, and uh, they would tend, uh, and it was mainly the, the tracks on Promise have mainly come from Nick, um, the kind of bass tracks uh, to them uh, Nick would tend to just throw me something to sort of improvise a song over um, and uh, little by little, we got to a point where we had a bunch of those. Um, maybe we had about six or something that we had in mind, and we sort of thought, well, we'll, we'll kind of pull these together. Uh, and then Nick at some point got in touch with uh, Gal, Paul Gallagher, who we used to record with um, in the old days to kind of tidy them up because mm -hmm. um, uh, they needed a bit of tidying. Um and then I think it was, a bit, it was probably about two years ago, we went into, it was kind of just as we were coming out of one of the lockdowns, we, we went into uh, the studio for a few sessions um, to tidy them up. And then and we had about five or six tracks in mind that we thought would work for it, that, you know, that, that kind of sounded, the demo version sounded good together. Uh, and we had a whole bunch of other songs that we we didn't necessarily think would fit together. Um, but once we went into the studio and actually a um, old friend, Peter Kelly, came and played drums for us. Uh, Ada lives overseas, so she wasn't able to play the drum tracks. Um, uh, she, she, she's played in all of the tracks, but she didn't play the drums. Um, uh, anyway, once they started to take that kind of shape, um, we thought there were a few more songs that we, we already had that would sound good with them. Uh, and before we knew it, we, we kind of had the 10, the, the the last of the 10 that we uh, that we worked on was the track called uh, The Polish Word for Love, um, which was actually, the I think, the very, very first one that, that Nick and I worked on back in around about 2017. Um, uh, so that's, that's a good... That's about the entire story of Promise. That's interesting to hear because because there's been an, another album you released, Wimpers, in 2020, I think. Yeah. I, so was that also songs that had been worked on for a while or was that something different? Uh, the What became Wimpers was entirely written and recorded around about 2009, um, so it was the kind of tail end. We we started working on that pretty well immediately after finishing the first album, A Time and a Place, which kind of eventually came out. You know, that 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 was sort of the trouble that we'd been knocking about for three, four years and hadn't put an album out. And we 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 really ought to have put an album out by then. So we had that out, and then we had all these other songs and we we started working on them kind of immediately. And then uh, and then the band kind of stopped, uh, if you like, not with a bang, but a whimper, hence the the name. And so, uh, but but Nick had finished mixing it with Gal, and then he and then he got it, um, he got it mastered. I think with Sam at uh, the Green Door Studio. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam, I always knew him from as Sam from Mother in the Addicts, but um, uh, I, but it just sat in a hard drive for years and then what happened was I can't remember the exact year but it would have been around about that 2016-2017 time all four of us were at a, a, a friend Chris's wedding um, a, and I'd noticed that 
um, the first album was no longer on like Spotify and stuff like that. And we said, well, we should do something about it. Find out why that is. And mm. um, what had happened was the, the, the American label that put it out had it for North America. So it was still able to be streamed there. Um, but the label that had put it out here, um, little label in Leeds, um, had folded, and which was a nice thing for them to do. It just said, there's your tracks back. But at the time when they said that, we didn't care about it or anything like that. So we just left it. And then we put that up. And then when it came to uh, the first lockdown, we kind of thought, oh, well, we should, somebody should make this a project just to put... Um, put that second record out, you know, just so that it's out and uh and, and we and we try to package it up as best we could. We found the most ridiculous picture of Michael that we could find and we put it on the front and we kind of cut half his head out of it. And uh, I, but but I'd also I I'd listened to that album, you know, um by this point six, seven, eight years after the point where it had been recorded. And I actually thought, oh that's 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 an almost really, really good, really good album. You know, like you can you can kind of hear um, on it that maybe about, I don't know, of the 10 tracks, maybe about five or six of them had been nailed and there were a few of them that just hadn't been. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of why it sort of whimpered out. Like um, it just, you, we just couldn't get them nailed. But uh, listening to it from the vantage point of six, seven years later, I'd kind of thought, oh, well, that's, not without its charm. I'm uh, quite happy for that to go out. But we we just, uh, having re-released or, you know, having got the got the first one back out online and through the streaming channels, we thought, well, it's actually not that expensive or difficult to do that. So we should just do it with the second one and then it's out and, and that's and that's fine. Um, and around, around about that time, um, we'd... Uh, we knew we had these other things that we kind of wanted to do. We didn't know whether or not we were going to call them pop up or just have it be something else. Um, uh, but when we put the second one out, we thought, well, we might as well. It's the, the, the same people making music together. We might as well call it pop up rather than come up with some other probably equally bad uh, band name. Um, and uh, and so we kind of got to work on that gradually more and more once the first one was out but um but the first one went out obviously in the middle of a lockdown so we we couldn't get to any proper work on it for maybe about six months after that so um i think that's i think that answers your question i'm um, sorry i've been speaking for some time yeah no absolutely because i i thought that because i agree with you i think whimpers is a cracking album i really enjoy a lot of it um and I, when it came out i was thinking oh what bad timing for it to come out kind of end the lockdown but that was deliberate that was almost this is something that we can work on yeah well, we were just kind of we were just kind of um putting it out to get out of the system type thing you know and and a uh, and i guess because everybody had been busy doing other things um a uh, it never really seemed the time for anybody to, to sort of say i'm going i'm going to make this a project right now i'm going to I'm going to um, get this unreleased album put out because, like, well, who cares? There was no massive demand for that to happen or anything like that. It was just really for our own sake. Um, particularly I got to a point, I'd found the mastered version of it on an old um, iPod that, um, that I never listened to except when I was either cooking or doing the dishes um, because I've got this wee iPod dock and that's, that's the... So... I only really listen to music on one of two old iPods when I'm in the kitchen. And uh, I'd had it on a bunch of times, just, you know, and I just thought oh, that's that's actually really quite a good record. It should go out, it it, it stands up. And I don't even know if, if the track order had been put in any particular way, but I'd been listening to it in that particular track order for some time. Uh, and so it just made sense to me in that, that track order. Um, so, we got that we got that stuck out um but yeah um and I'm, I'm i suppose the only connection with with promise or what has become promise was that um we kind of had a feeling that we should put that one out before we put anything yeah. new out you know um just just for for the sake of 
things being as they should be uh, in their in their right place, you know, and that was that was really it. And I mean, you mentioned your debut, a time and a place, and I couldn't believe when I checked it was fifteen years ago. But uh, do, how do you, do you feel like the same band now? No, not at all. You know, um, uh, I mean, we don't we we don't um, we don't get together in rehearsal rooms and things like that. We we really just get together in order to collaborate on and record music, you know. Um, I, and I suppose if if there's a kind of mission that we have now, it's that we felt we were, you know, we we, we were in our band very intensively for about I don't know, six years or something like that. And we played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows and we felt that we didn't um, release as much music as we really wanted to you know and we kind of felt well now that um uh you know we're not as young as we we once were and uh, or as uh, handsome or hairy or whatever it may be um that um you can now just sort of make the music for its own sake um uh, and it actually came to get I, it, although i said that it, effectively it's been about six years since we started working on that um that sounds like a long drawn out process. I mean, actually, it's really just that there was maybe I don't know, like sort of like a dozen little sessions, and in all of those sessions, one or two songs would be written, like like always without without fail. You know, uh, Nick would give me something to improvise over. I would improvise over it, and sometimes um, I'm trying to think of examples of tracks. So um, the the final song on the album, which I think we eventually called uh, the right thing, um, it, it pretty well is just the improvisation that happened. I mean, I re-recorded the vocal and we we tightened up some of the arrangement in the studio, but it just is as it is. The Polish word for love was literally just done on top of that arrangement that Nick Nick had. There were other tracks where uh, Nick's basic arrangement. Um, we kind of reworked and re-recorded a little bit, but you know, like uh, the promise was a little bit like that as well. Um, the overall arrangement of the song kind of needed um, a bit more space in it than the original loop had in it. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, but but it all actually happened really pretty quickly and pretty tidily, um, a, and it was. Quite reassuring that we could that we could still that we could still make or that we could make music like that now, which is really quite different from how we used to do it. We used to do it in a I don't know if it's a more conventional way, but you know we would we would sit for hours and hours with the four of us uh, in a room, um, and actually, you know there were there were hundreds of those sessions, and it might take. It might take a dozen of them for for a functional song to to come out of it type thing. Whereas this time, honestly, yeah, there were maybe about a dozen sessions all in, and uh, there was never a single session that didn't end with a with a with a song at the end of it, like ever, you know. Um, so that was that was really productive and really really quite different to how it was um, 10, 15 years ago, you know. It's interesting you're saying you were playing all those live dates before the debut came out because the album sounds like a band who play live together. It's got that kind of live energy, I think, on, on the debut as well. Talking of which, are there any plans to play live these songs, the new songs? Uh, I think the closest I could say is that there are plans to make plans, but um, not not actually... There's not actually a plan itself. Again, it's all just quite logistically difficult to yeah. um, one to actually find the time to do that. Um, and th there's a few things that um, you know we have these windows of time that we can spend playing music and amongst other things in life. You know, um, and if we decided that we wanted to play live, we would have to spend quite a lot of those windows making that sound good, you know, yeah. because right now I really don't know how that would, that would sound, 
uh, to be honest. I'd, you know, and we would have to get it to a point where we liked it before um, we would do it. So, uh, the, as I say, there are plans to make plans. It's possible that in the next couple of weeks we'll get ourselves into a room and um, try and figure out how that sounds or what it would need to sound the way we would want it to sound. Um, but no plans as in dates or anything tied together. Um, certainly when uh, when Michael and I were speaking to uh, Ian and Julia from last night from Glasgow around about the turn of the year, uh, you know, we were certainly open to it, you know, maybe doing something in their lovely wee shop or um or what have you. But um but again we're not we're not quite there. And also the uh, sorry, the other thing that I was going to say is uh, when you've got these wee windows, and we always need to remember that the thing that we're we're kind of trying to make up for is uh, not having released as much music. Um, so we could use, let's say, I don't know, five or six of those windows, try to tighten up a live set. Um, but we do need to remember that uh, we probably could have written six or seven songs in that time and and have something else on the go. And and it's really just about deciding what you think the best use of the time is, you know. Sure. Um, so. I think we would probably need to begin by um, going into a studio, a rehearsal studio somewhere and saying, right, okay, for the next three hours, we're just going to play the songs. Um, but even in terms of performance on on the songs, it's not, as I mentioned, AD, AD didn't play the drums on the, on the record because she wasn't available to play the drums on the record. Um, so Peter played the drums on the record. Um, but... That that's probably um, you know that was symptomatic of how the thing was recorded in general. I mean, apart from the fact that I sang the songs, mm -hmm. everything else was a uh, uh, people pitching in here, there, and everywhere. I mean, everybody played a bit of everything. Um, so it's not even as straightforward as this song has my guitar part, Nick's guitar part, a bass line that Michael played. I mean, you know, the song might have you know the the guitar was very often played by Michael or he played the, um, you know, there are songs that um, a, an individual member of the band played five or six things on. And, uh, you know, so again, there would be an awful lot of uh, having to rationalise how you would actually play it, you know, and uh, stripping it right down to the bare bones. And I think recreating the album would be nigh on impossible, and and that's that's okay. I don't usually like it when I go and see a band, and that's yeah. that's that's what I'm getting. You know, I, I I usually prefer it. I usually prefer to feel like what's happening in the room that night is is only ever happening in the room that night, and and you know, if I want to listen to the record, I can listen to the record, and I, I don't need to stand in a room filled with people to do that type thing. You know, so. Um, that was a very long answer to a very simple question, but um, uh, plans to make plans. I mean, it would it would be nice to do that, you know. But um, but we would need to be convinced that it would sound good. Um, we'd probably also need to be convinced that um, somebody wants to hear it, you know. Um, a, and I, I wouldn't blame anybody for uh, not particularly wanting to, or I wouldn't blame any, you know. Two or three hundred people for not wanting to turn up at the same place at the same time to sit listen to it. So, um, a few things to consider. Maybe some kind of in store thing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, music, music from Big Blue or something like that. Um, that that's fairly likely. You know, if we can make that happen for for Ian and Julia, then 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 we will do. It, you know. And you're saying, you know, you've, you, your time is precious and you're considering whether to rehearse live or to do new songs, which suggests that you're already thinking about future releases. Is that right? Yeah. Um, well, we're, we're certainly thinking about uh, new songs, you know. Um, I mean, we've got, we've got kind of songs that come in slightly different directions. So there are, there are, there are songs that kind of come from... Uh, I'll just pick up the guitar in my spare room and decide I'm going to write a song right now, and I'll and I'll write a song, and then I'll just record it on my phone, and I'll I'll send it to the others, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll say what do you think, and and there's I don't know there's there's a bank of about I don't know fourteen or fifteen of them sitting there, right. quite a few of which are workable, you know, that we we could do the work on. Uh, there's also then a uh, 
uh, a bunch of uh, loops that Michael has, some of which are really quite ready to, to work on. In fact, one of which um, we'll see what happens, but there was, there was an idea that we were going to we were going to work it for um, a, a B side or a kind of little EP thing to follow up the album. Um, uh, but certainly, there's a few that can that, that can be worked for the next project. And Nick always has has these things on the go as well. And indeed, there's there's a, there's quite a few of those ideas left over from last time as well that that we just kind of parked. Um, that that we should probably revisit and see if they're see if they're there. So, so I, I think it's likely that we'll, we'll keep doing that for, for sure, because, um, you know, we like doing that and it's um, a, I don't know, quite rewarding and sort of makes up for, um, again, what we, you know, we, we, we spent, we spent an awful long time playing shows and less time, uh, I, I guess, even writing and recording songs, you know, so, um, so that that's I, I don't like to say definite, but um, but it's very likely that we'll do that we'll release more music. Yeah, that's good to hear. Demo, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. It's really good seeing you. It's great to see you too, Ali. Um, I really enjoy the show. Thank you so much for having us on, and thank you for for playing the songs. Um, and I'm sure I'll see you about sometime. Okay. Absolutely. And this is Pop-Up and Snow.